Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on this channel. And today we have a look at the more or less new Nuxt plugin syntax, which is object based. So let's waste no time and jump right into it. Here we go. Okay, I mentioned the Nuxt plugin syntax, the object based one is new and it's kind of true. It didn't came in 3.10, but a few versions before. And maybe you've noticed it already, maybe you're using it already, but yeah, it's, it's not a problem if not, because nobody forces you to switch from function-based to object-based, but still we have a look what features, what benefits this object-based syntax brings, what problems might arise if you don't use it. And then we have a little look in the future and check out what Nuxt 4 might bring to the table for this syntax. As usual, we start with a little demo application and then go step-by-step -step through the things. Also, we used a little part of the last video. It's not important if you haven't watched it, but I also recommend to have a look because that might also be interesting. Link as usual, there, there, you know the drill. As usual, a demo application is as minimal as possible as your reproductions for errors should be, but that's not the topic here. So we have our Nuxt config, which is almost empty. We have an index page. It just says it worked. Perfect. We hopefully will see that. Then we have a server endpoint, a Nitro server endpoint called heartbeat. And there it just says, okay, we get a heartbeat from a call. Then we just return some text, Pong here, right? Because ping, Pong, of course. And then we have two plugins here, and that will be really interesting. So we have that heartbeat plugin, which only runs on client because of the .client.ts suffix. And this is typical function-based, right? Define as plugin, an async function, which also can be sync. But in this case, we await an API call that's happening. And here we use the use Nuxt app composable because you can also use composables and utils and plugins to get $API and then call that to actually send the call to the API. And where we get that from? Well, from the other plugin called my API. And this is already written in the object syntax. So it looks a bit different. We have a little look in that in a, in a bit. But first we have this part, which comes more or less from the last video. So we create a new fetch instance and Instead of using repository pattern, we just add some headers to, well, exemplary show how you could customize that. And then through the return and the provide, make it available through use Nuxt app. And so far so good. Now we can jump into the browser and see how the result looks like. But first, have you noticed something? Did you, did you maybe stumble upon something? Because what the hell are you talking about? Well, let's, let's just figure out, do you think the app works right now? If not, like, have a little look, stop the video, go back, take a look. If you figure out what's odd or wrong, that's great. So, yeah, um, stop it, watch it again. And here, now, we continue and see what happens. When we now open the application, we will see an error message. We had a little blink of like, ah, oh, okay, work, but no, it's an error message, error 500 saying $API is not a function. So why is that? What's, what's wrong here? And let's check out the code and see what it is. And here we have the following issue. In plugins, yeah, the heartbeat plugin depends on the my API plugin because here it is provided, right? But because of how plugins are scanned and read, it is the case that the heartbeat plugin is executed before the my API plugin. So that's why it says, oh, the API is not available. And well, how to fix that? Well, first of all, we can just say like, okay, you know what? We um, don't say heartbeat, but I don't know, my heartbeat or whatever. And then the order is different, right? My API alphabetical goes first, then my heartbeat. And that would work. If we jump in the browser straight away, we see that it worked as, as expected. But is this really the best solution? Like, do we now have to name all our things properly? Or what also works is like, just put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in front of it. Yeah, it's, it feels a little janky. It's not ideal, especially if you're at nine and then put in 10, it won't work as expected again because it's not sort of numerical, but lexicographical or alphabetical. So it won't compare numbers, but just a string. So yeah, not ideal. And one of the reasons why we have the object-based syntax. So let's have a look how we can fix that straight away. 
Before migrating the My Heartbeat plugin, well, let's name that Heartbeat again to actually verify it works. We have a look at the My API plugin. And in here, as we said before, this already is written in the object syntax. And actually, we could easily rewrite that in the functional syntax by just saying define next plugin here. And then we have that function. And everything that's in the setup function could go straight away here and it would work the same way. That means vice versa, if you have a function based plugin, that syntax, you could simply say, okay, take everything in a function or take the whole function and instead just write setup in here and put it in. Can be an error function, but also can be just the normal shorthand here. That works. So far, so good. Okay, we have that more or less as above, right? And now we can also give plugins a name and that will come very handy as we see in a second. So maybe let's take the time and rewrite that heartbeat plugin here to the options syntax because it's it's not a tricky. We have that, so we call setup here and do technically the same thing as we did before. We do the whole thing async and we're good to go. Okay, does it solve our issue? Let's have a look in the browser and see what happens. Nah, still same problem. Okay, kind of expected. We just changed the syntax that doesn't magically solve the issue for us, right? Sometimes you hope it will be, but no. And there are a few more things to do because the option-based syntax has lots of benefits. So we define a name, but there is one other thing that you can do amongst a lot of others that we'll cover. You can define how plugins depend on each other. So there is a property that you can tell us, say, hey, wait, please wait for this plugin or multitude of plugins to execute and then execute the plugin you're in right there. Let's have a look how that actually works in the code. It is pretty simple by just saying depends on over here and then define an array of the plugins it depends on. It can be just one, of course, as well. And the best part is if we start a string here, you will see there are lots of plugins listed already, which are the internal Nux plugins. So you could just say, yeah, please wait until, I don't know, the head plugin is loaded and then do something, which can be really useful to execute stuff as early as possible or based on a chain of dependencies. In our case, this heartbeat plugin just depends on the my API plugin that we've defined before over here with the name. And here's also where the name comes into play. As I mentioned, the whole thing is type safe. So even if some modules declare some plugins or Nuxt itself, as you've seen, they're all listed here. And after the implementation, well, let's see what the browser gives us now. Hooray, it worked. <laughs> Amazing. That's really great. So with the object-based syntax, we can define explicit dependencies and we don't have the issue of naming the things very weirdly or are not sure how plugins run exactly. With that, it's pretty clear. And there's one more thing. Yeah, there's one more. You won't believe it. The object-based syntax has another goodie for us. Because right now, when you have plugins, they run synchronously. So they start with the first plugin, second plugin, are executed and wait for each other. So if you have some API calls and plugins, well, that can take a long time, right? And also, if they're executed on the server, this slows down the time to first byte, which is really not ideal for server-side rendering. So what if you could just execute these things in parallel if they're independent? And then just explicitly define a dependency through depends on. Well, that's precisely what's possible right now. Let's check it out. And that's once again just another option saying parallel true. That's the best part. That's the whole thing. So your custom plugin now runs in parallel with all the others, except the one it depends on. So that also means that you don't really, if you have multiple API calls, have to wait unless they are depending on each other, but then you would explicitly define it. The only downside is now that, well, the Nuxt plugins, they still don't run in parallel. And maybe some module plugins also not, if they don't use that syntax already. So that's kind of a bummer, right? But the good part is there is a module from the newest core team member, Julian, Julian Huang, that already allows you to run all your Nuxt plugins in parallel. Yeah, also the ones from modules and so on and so on. It is not the functionality of the core right now, but it already helps you in your current application. Link as usual in the description. And there's one more goodie. There is an issue open for Nuxt 4.x. So for the next major version, that also allows us to just set all the things by default to parallel, all the plugins, because of the depends on property. Of course, there's still in discussion. There is no final decision made yet, but 
To me, this sounds very reasonable. We just need the adoption from the modules in the ecosystem, right? So that's pretty cool. That means performance of your next application gets even better without you doing much. Even nicer. So if all the modules adopted and the core adopted, perfect. Then you only have to define your explicit dependencies if you have some, right? If you just create a custom fetch instance, that's fine. You don't really depend on much, right? So pretty cool. What else do we got? Let's uh, let's have a final look and see what else there is. Another property is the nth property, which basically allows us to say, hey, this plugin should not run in the context of Next Islands or server components. It's especially useful if you have some optimizations that don't really apply to server components ever. So you could just say islands false, which makes them faster, of course. Also, more ends could be added later on, but that's available right now. And that's not even it. There's one more thing, and this is kind of an advanced use case, which is the enforce option. And the enforce option basically just tells us, okay, we could say the default one, which is also actually the default, or pre or post. And to explain that, let's have a look on the source code and see what it's actually doing. For this feature, we jump into the plugin metadata.ts file inside the core plugins. So yes, of course, Nuxt also runs some plugins here. And the interesting part is this internal order map. So we see the order of all plugins which will be executed. So we have some pre-all and post-all on both sides. For Nuxt, that's only reserved to them, right? Then we have some revivers. I talked about it recently. Video as usual up in the description about like serialization, reviving classes, payloads, and so on. So custom ones from the user, from Nuxt. And then we have pre-default default from Nuxt, very important, the user default, post Nuxt, and post user. And this eventually is reflected down here. So the options you can set pre, default, and post also depends on when the plugin runs compared to the other plugins. That works without depends on and with it, right? So you can even say, hey, okay, I don't really depend on any specific plugin, but on all the plugins that are running before, so I want to run after all the things or I want to run before all the user plugins, so I make sure I provide certain things. So this is another nice feature if you don't have specific dependency, but just want to ensure, hey, if the user runs some plugins, that's fine. Okay, I want to provide my stuff before, or hey, I want to execute something after all the plugins run. Cool. So these were all the features of the object syntax right now, and as I've shown you with the issue, there is coming way more. Next 4 will be very interesting, especially with the performance boost. And also, we're looking into statically analyzing maybe some more parts, giving room for more optimizations and things to figure out. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments and tell me, will you use the plugin syntax, the object one, of course? Does it give benefit to you? What do you think? Other than that, see you soon. Happy hacking.